Hello there and welcome to this week's casual educational video that is all about impairments. Now, this video will be divided into three different segments and in each one we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. We're going to start with fairly simple ones that are quite easy to understand and slowly we're going to progress towards more complex ones. Now, impairment in the realm of accounting basically means a reduction of the value of an asset. Therefore, the first thing that we need to establish is how is the value of an asset being measured and why is this so important? So let's start with a simple example. Let's imagine that we have a company named XYZ and all that it owns is a car, a very simple vehicle. So how much is this vehicle worth to the company? It depends. Let's assume that there is no employee that has a driver's license. In this case, the only thing that they can do with this vehicle is, well, sell it. So how much is it worth? Well, the vehicle is worth whatever the market price is minus the costs that the company is going to incur in the process of selling it. In accounting terms, it's the fair value minus selling costs. Now, if the accounting value, if the book value of this car on the balance sheet was 25,000, but the company can get only 20,000 by selling it after covering the selling costs, obviously what's on the balance sheet does not represent the fair value. Therefore, in this case, a 5,000 impairment would be recorded. Now, imagine that one of the employees has a driver's license. The same asset, the same car can now be used for business purposes. This is called value in use. So how can it be used? Let's keep it simple. Let's imagine that XYZ is a delivery business. And thanks to this asset, now the company generates 2,000 net profit per month. Now, the value of the business is, of course, the present value of all the future cash flows. So let's assume that after all the calculations have been done, the value of the asset in use is 40,000. So now we have two numbers. We have the fair value, less selling costs, 20,000, and we have value in use of 40,000. So which one do we use to check if there is an impairment? The answer is the higher number. That is how much the asset is worth to the business. This is what is being compared with the accounting or book value in order to make sure that what is on the balance sheet is not overstated. This is so-called an impairment test and every company has to do it at least once a year. There are many events that could lead to an impairment of an asset and these events can be grouped in three categories. The first one is change in demand. Remember the first example where the only option the company had was to sell the asset? Well, if there is less demand for a car of this type, the price will decline and that means the recoverable amount or what the company can recover by selling it would be much lower. So it would lead to even further impairments. The second category is damage of an asset. This is quite obvious. In some cases, of course, you would not be able to sell it for as much because it's in a worse condition. And in some cases, imagine if a three falls over the car, well, you can no longer use it. So reporting it on the balance sheet as 25,000 would be unfair because it's not worth as much, even if you are to use it, because you can't. So the last one is if there is a change in the legal or economic conditions. This one seems a bit more complex, but remember the second example where the car was being used for the delivery business? Imagine that there are new competitors. Imagine that the economic environment is not so good as it was before and now the business is not generating 2000 per month. In fact, it is losing money. But not only that, it is not expected to be profitable anytime soon. You can no longer justify that this value is worth 40,000 because it's not generating as much value. So this would also lead to an impairment. Although these are quite simple examples, if you understand this, you can follow the impairment of all physical assets. So for example, why would a company impair a building? Well, maybe the building was no longer in use, they were, wanted to sell it and the prices declined significantly. Maybe there was a fire that damaged the building. How about inventories? Why would a company impair inventories? Well, the market prices could decline significantly. There might be a flood that damaged the inventory. The inventory could become obsolete. So if you can follow this, you can understand the impairment of any physical or tangible asset. Now, how about intangible assets? Let's introduce another company. Let's call it ABC. And it decided to purchase a patent for a cutting edge technology from a startup and it paid $1 million. So what they have on the balance sheet now is a patent 
and they had some internal calculations. It is expected that this pattern will yield significant returns in the future, so the price paid can be justified. So on the balance sheet, they have this pattern for 1 million. Now recently, a few competitors developed something very similar and the value of 1 million can no longer be justified. So this has been the value in use that has significantly declined because the yield that was initially expected is no longer justifiable. So it is clear that an impairment should be recorded. Now let's bring the two companies together. Let's imagine that the management of ABC decided that this whole pattern cutting edge technology is just not for them. And they're going to keep it simple. They're going to submit an offer and acquire XYZ, the delivery business that all it has is a car. So they're basically going to make an offer to buy a business that owns a car. Can they not just buy a car and start their own delivery business? Absolutely. But to get to the same level of profitability, to build a brand, to build customer relationship, well, that would take time. So after spending some time internally to calculate the value of XYZ, they submitted an offer for 50,000 that was accepted. So now ABC acquired the delivery business paid 50,000 and on their balance sheet, of course, they have 50,000 less cash. What they have is a car that is 20,000. That's how much it would be if they are to buy the car, the open market. They have customer relationships, let's say 10,000, and then they have Goodwill explaining the rest. So what is Goodwill? Well, it is an accounting plug. It allows us to explain the total cash outflow of 50,000 with what flows into the business. And this is only occurring in the event of acquisition. And it is also subject to impairment. So when is goodwill being impaired? When what is on the balance sheet of 50,000 can no longer be justified by the performance of the business. Let's not forget the value of the business is the present value of the future cash flows. So if the delivery business starts making 1,000 instead of 2,000, then starts losing money, and there is no way forward to profitability and the 50,000 can no longer be justified, goodwill will be impaired. Impairment of goodwill is basically a result of a poor acquisition. The management had certain assumptions under which the value of the acquired company was estimated and it turns out that they were wrong. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of it and as always, see you in the next one.